AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Siemens PLM Software, transforming the process of innovation. Here are today's top headlines. GM's restructuring runs into a brick wall. Toyota's debt level soars and Carbon Motors comes up with a new kind of cop car. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Friday, January 23, 2009, and now the news. Uh-oh, this could be big trouble for General Motors. The Detroit Free Press reports that one of GM's largest bondholders has told the company to stuff it when asked to swap GM bonds for GM stock. The Pacific Investment Management Company, better known as PIMCO, walked out on the discussions, which could imperil GM's restructuring plans, which imperils its bridge loans from the government, which could take the company one step closer to bankruptcy. This is a dangerous development, folks, and one we're going to have to keep a close eye on. You know, Toyota used to be in such a strong financial position that it earned the nickname the Bank of Toyota. But as part of its ambitious global expansion plans, Toyota's borrowing and debt load have zoomed from 5.5 trillion yen in the year 2000 to 12.4 trillion yen today. The company has 1.8 trillion yen in cash, roughly $18.5 billion or about the same level of cash that Ford has. Now, Toyota still has a solid balance sheet, but not as solid as it used to be. And it'll lose money this year, something that's never happened before in its history. You can read more about this on John's Journal at our website, AutolineDetroit.tv. WordsAuto.com reports Chrysler might sell two B-sized cars in the American market. The company's already partnered with Nissan to build a small car based on the Dodge Hornet concept, but the pending Fiat deal means more small cars could be on the way. Say, could Chrysler get a version of the wildly popular Cinquecento? Now that'd be pretty cool. Carbon Motors is developing a purpose-built police car. It's arguing law enforcement would be better off with a vehicle designed specifically for them instead of modifying civilian cars. Called the E7, it's powered by a 300 horsepower diesel capable of running on biofuel. It features a six-speed automatic transmission and rear-wheel drive. The company claims it will deliver 28 to 30 miles per gallon combined and sprint from zero to 60 in only six and a half seconds. It has a heads-up display, a backup camera, and ballistic protection panels. Pricing hasn't been announced yet, and no word yet where it'll be built. Carbon Motors is based in Atlanta, Georgia. Canadian auto workers are balking at wage cuts for the big three. They're being asked to bring their wages in line with U.S. workers so GM and Chrysler can qualify for bridge loans from the Canadian government, reports WardsAuto.com. But the union's saying no dice but it will be willing to make adjustments in areas like productivity to help save costs. Chrysler is seeking 1.6 billion Canadian dollars and GM wants 2.4 billion loonies. GM Holden announced Cadillac's introduction into Australia has been delayed indefinitely. The company cited the downturn in the Australian auto market as well as the entire global downturn as the reasons for the delay. Coming up next, a preview of this week's episode of AutoLine Detroit. We'll be back right after this. Siemens, transforming the process of innovation. On this episode of AutoLine Detroit, I'm joined by Jim O'Sullivan from Mazda, Pete Reyes from the Ford Motor Company, Dan Neal from the LA Times, and Rod Alberts from the Detroit Auto Dealers Association. Here's a preview of my interview with Pete Reyes the chief engineer of the new Ford 2010 Taurus. We talk all about this stylish new sedan and how the company developed it. Early research for this car, uh, the customer told us they didn't want a staid classic family sedan, which was tough to get our heads around because when, yeah, Taurus, was, and when Taurus was launched in 86, it was iconic, it revolutionized the segment, but it was a family sedan and families are moving to crossovers, SUVs, and what the customer was telling us, they wanted something that was really expressive, something that they were almost guilty to buy for a family. <laughs> you know, they have to carry almost their guilty. family, and right. you know, but they just said, I, I want to be guilty driving that thing. I, I want it to look so good and say so much about me. 
If you want to hear the rest of my interviews with these industry insiders, you can watch the entire episode of AutoLine Detroit on our website later this afternoon. But before we go, I've got to announce the winner of this week's trivia contest. We asked if you could name the make and model of car that Barack Obama's presidential limousine is now based on. As many of you responded, it's a Cadillac DTS. Now, the presidential limo is a heavily customized vehicle that probably shares nothing with a production DTS. So if you responded with Cadillac, that was close enough for us. And as always, my crack team has randomly selected today's winner from the pool of correct responses. Pookie, the envelope, please. Mm -hmm. Well, Pookie, what's this? Mm -hmm. oh, you did your nails. Mm -hmm. How sweet. And the winner of this week's contest is Ron Berzuk of Canton, Michigan. Congratulations, Ron. You just won this gorgeous blue model of the sporty 1972 Datsun 240Z. So enjoy it. That's it for today's show. As always, from all of us here at AutoLine Daily, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Visit our website for even more great content all week long. AutoLine Extra, Don's Journal, Podcasts, and even more. So click over and get the inside view at AutolineDetroit.tv.